You should know that cholesterol can't be used as energy when we train like other fatty acids available in the blood. But how we train can indirectly or consequently influence the levels of good and bad cholesterol. Therefore, you must exercise to increase the level of HDL, which is the good uh, cholesterol, and to decrease the bad cholesterol level, which is the LDL. And if this one is too high, it indicates a surplus of lipids in the blood. You may also have too many triglycerides, but as opposed to cholesterol, these lipids can actually be used as energy when we exercise. We get these triglycerides from the foods eaten. Therefore, a diet rich in high fat dairy products and animal products can lead to high triglycerides and bad cholesterol levels. You may eat far too many highly processed foods rich in bad carbs, protein and saturated fats, so you should be honestly careful about your nutrition. Hence, after cleaning up the day-to-day -day diet, the question is, which type of training is better? Is it aerobic, resistance training, body weight or weighted, regardless, or combined exercise? Oh, and by the way, if you're really overweight and have a difficulty in getting fit over the long run, naturally, and if you really want to improve your lifestyle, find out what I would do if I were into your situation. I made a video for this especially, and you can check it out right here. Now let's get back. I found a study on the sports medicine website, linked in the description, and I relate to their discoveries, which is why I made this video. They concluded that regular exercise shows a positive effect in reducing bad cholesterol and triglycerides levels, as well as increasing good cholesterol. Yet, yeah, training volume and intensity are two components that influence these lipid profiles in the blood. Very high bad cholesterol in the blood shows a risk of cardiovascular complications, so I understand the necessity of reducing it, while high levels of good cholesterol indicate a healthy cardiovascular system. Then question, what trains better the respiratory and cardiovascular system if not the VO2 max type of training and aerobic? Certain exercises increases the muscle's ability to utilize lipids available in the plasma instead of glycogen. Some workouts are glycogen dependent by nature, but the ones used in combination with oxygen have this positive impact, like jogging, swimming, riding the bike, skipping the rope, hiking at a fast pace, but the impact is not so drastic as studies reveal, but they change the ratio actually between the good and the bad cholesterol in a good way. Another sports physiology book uh, says that we require up to eight weeks to achieve aerobic adaptations, almost twice that of anaerobic physiological adaptations, but definitely a person who eats a lot of carbs more than required, perhaps, will benefit from doing workouts dependent on glucose metabolism. And here I include strength, power, and hypertrophy uh, type of training. Suppose you closely read the paper I indicated. In that case, you'll see that researchers recommend training volume instead of extreme intensity. Plus, three to four workouts a week with consistency of several months. If you do aerobics, chase volume somewhere to 45-60 minutes of continuous exercise and keep a heart rate of around 140. VO2 max is done at a higher pace and over intervals of 1-2 and respectively 3 minutes of continuous exercise. So run at around 80% of your total capacity and over distances varying from 400 meters to one kilometer or go by the time doesn't matter you will gradually create adaptations but it takes time and consistency in the meantime your organism will learn how to deal with this excess of lipids slowly balancing the levels now concerning resistance training the authors concluded that low to moderate intensity resistance training results in greater benefits to the lipid profile than high intensity resistance training. So greater volume is recommended and it makes sense since this eventually leads to more mechanical work, so more contractions and more nutrients at use. As a final conclusion, you should start cardio 
and resistance training both. This will create more physiological adaptations eventually, not just the reduction of uh, lipids in the blood. So I hope this makes sense and helps in a way. <laughs> it's like I invite you to do general training, but with a little bit of tackling the nutrition and the intensity and volume. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think and I'll catch you in the next video. Ciao.